Hey everyone, today we're going to start working on this little match three game and we're going to lay the foundations for that by building a grid system that will work vertically and horizontally for uh, this and for future projects. Okay, we're going to start with a basic class. I'm going to call it Grid System 2D, and we're going to make this a generic class. So I'm just, I'm just going to use T for that. Then we're going to put in just our basic starter variables here. We want the grid to have a width, a height, cell size, an origin, and then we'll have a, an array of type T. Next, I'm going to define a coordinate converter abstract class, and we're going to be using this to make concrete implementations of all of our basically to do all of our math. So at any point here, if you're following along, just pause the video and, uh, and catch up with me. And uh, next we'll uh, implement our actual vertical converter here. And I'm just gonna walk through it real quickly and just talk about what it's doing. Let's put a little summary in there quickly. Now, basically we're gonna have four methods in each one. As you can see, I've defined them in the abstract class, but the grid to world is, we'll take an X, Y and give you back a vector with an X, Y and no Z because this is the vertical converter. We're going to make a horizontal one in a moment. And the grid to world center will take the cell size and offset whatever it is right into the middle there. Now, if we go and look at the world to grid, uh, it's kind of doing the opposite of that. So we'll take in a world position with an X, Y, and we'll convert that into an actual X, Y integers for our grid position. And the forward property will give us the direction towards the camera. Okay, now is probably a good time to get caught up with me. Um, I'm just going to collapse up this abstract class because we don't really need to look at it anymore. And then let's move on. So the next thing we're going to do, I'm going to bring in a constructor here. This will set all the default start values for our grid. One of them right here, we're going to, just in case somebody sends in the default or null for one of the coordinate converters, will instantiate a vertical one. So if somebody sends in nothing, the default's going to be vertical. And that's what the null co coalescing operator is there for. So whenever you guys see double question marks, that means if it's null, then we're going to give it this instead. Next up, um, if uh, debug is true, we're going to call a new method called draw debug lines. So uh, we'll do that from our constructor there. And then I've got a new method defined on line 27. Before we can write that one, we need a little helper method, get world position. That'll help us know where to draw all of our grid lines. And now let's iterate over all the X and Ys. I put a float duration in there of 100, and this is just going to use our get world position and draw those lines all throughout the grid. And then at the very end, at the end of the loops, we'll just draw lines on the very top and the very far edge. Next, we want a little helper function that will draw text in the world. So you could, might want to pause the video and look at this, but it's basically just bringing in all the parameters that we would, might want to use to set a text mesh pro object in the game, um, including a parent so that we can uh, hide them all kind of in the hierarchy. They can be, they don't have to be all in the main level. So the next thing we'll do is I'm just going to add a, a line here on line 36. So to call our get world text or create world text and um, I want it to be in the center, but for now, I'm just going to use the get world position and just make a note in here. We'll make a method to do that right away. I don't want the text to be in the corners of the grid. I want it to be positioned right in the middle. So we'll do that next here. Okay, there we go. This is going to be a public method because we're going to use it outside of this class, but we want to use it here as well. So as you can see, it's just calling a converter to the grid to world center. And let's replace our method here. So now all of our text will show up properly in, in our scene. Okay, let's make a method that's the inverse of the get world position. That'll be our get x, y. So in this one, we can send in a world position and just get our x, y coordinates back. So that'll be useful when we're making our game. So coming up next here, we should just, let's make a few notes here. We're gonna have to implement some setters and getters for values and we'll make uh, we'll make them work for world positions and for grid positions. So those will be public methods for us to use. Um, 
And one other thing we should probably do is make a validator. We want to make sure that the position being sent into these methods is actually a real position on the grid. So let's define something for that here too. I think all we need to worry about is whether or not it's in range of the X and Y's. So we can just make a little expression body method for that like so. And yeah, now we can use this in any kind of input to validate it. Let's move on. Let's define these methods quickly. Uh, they're, they're very simple. First, let's start with the set value. So we'll make two me public methods here. One takes world position, one takes x, y. Um, yeah, it's pretty straightforward. We use the coordinate cord uh, converter if it's coming in from the world. Um, otherwise, we'll just call the second method and check is valid. Now that let's get to these uh, get values is basically the same thing. Um, you know, bring in a world position, then we convert it We're using the get x, y, and then we call the other method, which just says if it's valid, then, you know, send it back. If not, the default, whatever the default is for that one. And, you know, that could be whatever, it depends what the type is, right? Um, if it's a class or something by reference, it'd probably be null. Uh, if it's an integer, for example, it would be zero. So I think this is looking pretty good. Uh, let's just collapse this up for, make it a little easier to read. It's still, it's not a very long class. It's still just over a hundred lines. Uh, let's see, what else can we do here? Some, any more improvements? Okay, let's, uh, let's add an event so that Anytime we set a value, we can we can just fire an event off so that anything that's listening to the grid might maybe wants to do something, play a noise, or uh, maybe update the, the type itself, to maybe the number of times it's been clicked on has some bearing to the game. Anyways, it's not strictly necessary, but we'll probably make use of it. So uh, anytime that happens, um, we can send in the X, Y, and the type. Now we do need a few more classes before we can start playing with this in the editor. And the first one, I think we'll just define what will eventually become our main game loop, but it also needs to instantiate the grid. So let's start with that one. Uh, generally, I, I like making classes right in Rider or in Visual Studio Code, whichever, and then just moving them over because the uh, Unity editor takes too long. So if you're in Rider, that's just hit control period. And you'll get a context menu that lets you do that. Um, I'm not sure. I think it's the same in Visual Code. Anyway, let's define our public or not public serialized fields so that we can have some base settings for our game. Now, <laughs> Copilot's trying to get me to put a converter in there, but I don't want to do that. What we really want to do is just instantiate it with code. So let's jump back to the our grid system and. Let's make some factory methods that we can call so we don't have to pump in all of these variables every time. Uh, for now, let's get a one, here we go, vertical grid. So now with that defined in our match three game loop here, in the start method, we can just say, well, we're going to bring it in, you know, using that factory method. So let's have a think here. Let's make one more class. We'll call it grid object. Grid object will hold the reference to the actual game object that we're instantiating, like candies or whatever. And uh, it'll need to know, probably a reference to the grid is good, X and Y. Um, and yeah, so let's make this a generic type too, so that it can hold any value that we want to put in, uh, whatever that might be. So in this game, as you saw at the beginning, we're made some little gems, but uh, it could be anything. So let's just uh, define that in the class, in the, uh, in the type of the grid, and in our actual constructor. Those all have to reference our new type to make it work correctly. And then we're going to hold that value somewhere. So let's uh, define that as well. So let's make one more class. I'm going to call it gem because that's pretty generic, I think, for this kind of game. 
I'll just define it here, move it into its own class, and it, it can be empty for now. We'll work on that when we're building the actual game itself, when we're finished with the grid. Just for now, it's just a placeholder. Just one more thing. I just need to mark our match three game loop as a mono behavior so that we can put it into our game. So that should be everything we need to have a working vertical grid. So why don't we go take a look at that quickly? Okay, so we can see that the grid's showing up nicely. It's not right in the center though. Let's, uh, let's just adjust that a little bit, find the right spot for it. Mark that to save after. And let's go have a look at it in scene view, which is much more interesting. So there we go. So we can see our lines showing up um, and all of our numbers. So that looks pretty good. I think I'm happy with that. Let's let's uh, go finish implementing our horizontal converter and then we can try that one out too. So this is gonna be almost identical to the vertical converter. So I'm just gonna paste this in here. And as you can see, we'll just, let's look over it real quick. So in order to do horizontal, we want to go on the Z axis instead of the Y. So you can look, see in all those methods here, Y is getting substituted into the Z. Uh, when we try and return an X, Y, we're doing the same thing. And then the forward vector is we're going to use the negative up. So that'll point upwards in the world. Now let's go back to uh, match three class here and change vertical grid out for the horizontal grid um, factory method that we built. So that should be it really. Let's jump back into the game. We just need to let's click play. Let's go have a look in the scene view. And there we go. Everything's laid out properly and the numbers are all facing the right direction. That's gonna be it for this video. We'll follow up with the actual game loop in part two, which is coming really soon. Click the bell if you wanna get notified for that one and click the like and subscribe if you're enjoying this so far. Thanks.